In this video, we will solve for impedance. In Isaac Newton's gravity model, 1 over travel time squared is the impedance. There are many ways that we can think about impedance. Impedance is the difficulty of going between two places. It turns out that a negative exponential probably fits the data a little bit better than 1 over travel time squared, or even 1 over travel time to some arbitrary coefficient, because the shapes of the curves just follow a little bit more closely. What is the appropriate functional form for the impedance function? Unfortunately, there is not a good behavioral theory as to why it should be one rather than the other, but there might be empirical evidence that one of those functions fits the observed data better than the other. So it's a question of an empirical fit rather than a theoretical basis. Some have mathematical derivations which are nice, but that's only valid if it actually matches behavior. It turns out that the functional relationship between the modern gravity model in its negative exponential form and the logit model are very similar. They enable simultaneous choice models to be easily developed. The key difference is that the gravity model is much more aggregate. This is an example of an impedance function I estimated a while ago for the Washington DC region. It is a negative exponential form. It is compared to a classic gravity model such that the area under the two curves is equal. They are both downward sloping, but they have somewhat different slopes. More recently, it's been proposed that the log sum from the logit model would make a good multimodal impedance function for use in destination choice. This requires solving destination choice, mode choice, and route choice iteratively to converge on a consistent answer. In this example, if the impedance is 15 minutes and we've estimated a model which says that our impedance, or f of c sub ijm, some function of the cost, which is equal to the monetary plus the time cost of traveling from i to j by mode m equals, in this case, minus 0 0.08 times c sub ij, which is the cost of traveling from i to j, minus a constant, and the constant doesn't really matter. We can solve for the impedance if the travel time is 15 minutes, and we get 0 0.11 minutes in this example. Now, why am I using c instead of t for the cost of travel? Because we were using t for the number of trips, and it would be confusing to use t for more than one thing. This is an empirical function. There's no law of physics which says that e to the minus 0 0.08 times Cij is the impedance relationship between two places. It's just what was estimated with the data for Washington, D.C. at a single point in time for a particular mode. In practice, we were going to need answers for multiple origin-destination pairs, so we have to solve the impedance for more than one origin and more than one destination. If we took our impedance to be 1 over C sub Ij squared, which is 1 over travel time squared here, and the table gives the travel times between and within zones. This is a travel time matrix. Again, we can do a tiny, tiny bit of arithmetic and solve, and we would get the impedance between every origin and every destination. Now, the impedances have, in a sense, become probabilities. Not that 0.04 is your probability, but 0.04 over 0.04 plus 0.02 is roughly the probability that you'd be willing to make an intrazonal trip into Codopolis while 0.02 over 0.02 plus 0.04 is the probability that you'd be willing to go from Dakotopolis to New Fargo, assuming that the number of trip origins or trip destinations was the same. In general, that's not the case. So in the next step, we will be multiplying this impedance by the number of trip origins and trip destinations in the subsequent step. But the first thing we had to do is calculate the impedance between every zone.